Good evening, Aja. So now we're going to do our poetry. And we're still reading from Where the Sidewalk Ends. It's a collection of poetry by Seth Silverstein. Now, remember, just to remind you, which I'm certain you know, that Where the Sidewalk Ends, that type of title, that type of title is indicative of what? chaos, right? Because remember I said if there was a spontaneous sinkhole in the middle of the street or in the middle of the sidewalk and you suddenly fell into a really, really big pit and it was going and going and going, it's what we can call an abyss or can, something just really, really deep, you would kind of feel what? Chaotic. There would be sirens and ambulance and all kind of things going on. So having said that, when we look at where the sidewalk ends, all right, when we look at where the sidewalk ends, we're talking about chaotic things. So if you look at the illustration, right, for this picture, look at that toucan's nose, right? It's incredibly long. Does the toucan, is the toucan's nose usually that long? Of course not. So that lets me know that the poet, the poem may be a little bit wacky as well, okay? So let's read about the toucan. The toucan. Tell me who can catch a toucan, Lucan. Just how few can ride the toucan, toucan. What kind of goo can stick you to the toucan, glue can? Who can write some more about the toucan, you can. Now he uses figurative language. <clears throat> no, excuse me, he doesn't use figurative language. He actually uses a homonym. And he does use a little bit of figurative language because and true, true, we wouldn't be able to stick you to a toucan um, and not necessarily goo. I mean, actually, sometimes when there are oil spills, birds birds get caught in the oil spills and it makes their wings all sticky and it makes it really difficult for them to fly. But we wouldn't deliberately put glue or anything gooey on a toucan so that it couldn't fly, right? So it's not, so in that he's just playing with rhyme. He's just using creative license. Um, and it says, tell me who can catch a toucan, Lucan? Just how few can ride the toucan, toucan. So right here is the homonym, okay? Because he look, he's, he's kind of playing with toucan, which is the, the root word to, but not to as in a number two or to you, but the sound to, right? The smaller word. Remember we were practicing when we were practicing spelling, we would say, hmm, is there a smaller word in that word that I hear? So he's comparing two to two, right? T-O and T-W-O are homonyms in that they sound the same, right? But they actually are two different words, okay? Okay, so we actually talked about this before. So homophones are a subgroup of homonyms. So all homophones are homonyms, but all homonyms are not homophones. So homophones like this are words that sound the same but have different meanings. Sometimes the words sound the same like can and can, and they, they sound the same or spell the same but have completely different meanings, okay? So these two are homophones in that they sound the same, but they're spelled differently. So two in the word toucan is T-O. The word toucan is T-W-O. Down below here, we can say, who can write some? Who can write some more about the toucan? You can. So they're playing off the, the sound can, the smaller word can, at the end of the word um, toucan, and they're saying can. So even up here, the glue can. That glue can is different because it's an actual object than toucan. And even can in the last stanza is saying you can as to imply ability. So each one of those words has a different definition even though they sound the same and are spelled the same. So he played with a lot of homonyms in this very, very simple poem. Right? But that's something that you've already know because we've studied that previously. So you can think, use the prior knowledge and the prior things you've learned to be able to further examine it. So we're going to read it one more time. The toucan. Tell me who can catch a toucan, Lucan. Just how few can ride the toucan, toucan. What kind of goo can stick, what kind of goo can stick you to the toucan, glue can. Who can write some more about the toucan, you can. So, um, Toucan is actually, Toucan Sam is the bird that's on the Fruit Loops box, all right? So, that's just 
and a side. Okay, so now let's look at this one. That's a wacky illustration. Guess who the illustrator is? You got it. Steph, Steph, excuse me, Shell. I think I said, I think I called the man Steph in the beginning too, but it's Shell Silverstein. So if I, if I mispronounced it, please forgive me. Mommy's a little bit sleepy today. So, um, <clears throat> but look here. What's, what's odd about this picture? I know you already know it's so easy. That's right. His head is on his caboose. Isn't that crazy? His head is on his bottom. Is that where it goes? Absolutely not. But it's where the sidewalk ends. So anything goes, right? So let's see what the poem is all about. The planet of Mars. On the planet of Mars, they have clothes just like ours, and they have the same shoes and the same laces, and they have the same charms and the same graces, and they have the same head and the same faces, but not in the very same places. Okay, let's look at it again. The planet of Mars. On the planet of Mars, they have clothes just like ours, and they have same shoes and same laces, and they have same charms and same graces, and they have same heads and same faces, but not in the very same places. So now, there he's describing something that's out of the ordinary because even the toucan, the toucan is usually found in the tropical rainforest or in, um, in tropical temperatures. So similarly, he's talking about where's Mars? Where's Mars? Can you tell me? I know that you can. In outer space, that's right. It's another planet in the solar system, right? So people who live on Mars or if there was extraterrestrial life on Mars, it's called, they're called Martians, right? And so he was saying, so he's basically saying like, oh, they're very similar. They're just like us, celebrating difference and unique. He's like, but, you know, their heads and faces are just not in the same places. So he was playing with Ryan, but he's also introducing the idea that we can embrace difference, that everyone doesn't have to look the same. And when there's chaos, there's sometimes there's beauty in difference and there's beauty in being unique and there being distinct features. OK, so let's look at this again. On the planet of Mars, they have clothes just like ours, and they have same shoes and same laces, and they have same charms and same graces, and they have same heads and same faces, but not in the very same places. Do you remember when we when we watched the booze? Um, so, anyway, this is all about extraterrestrial life and how it can be different and similar. So, with that, those are our two poems for today. Um, let's do our prayers. Now I lay me down to sleep, I pray the Lord, my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord, my soul to take. And let's do one other one. Mm -hmm. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I love you, baby. I love you so much. And I can't wait to see you. Please call me when you get a chance to watch this video. I love you. I love you. Mm -hmm. Sweet dreams. I'm certain you have a blessed day because you are brilliant in every sense of the word and you're amazing. I love you.